Everybody goes for the procession.
Almighty and everlasting God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him that is weary. Morning by morning he wakens, he wakens my ear, to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been confounded. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me?
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. <clears throat> Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Gospel acclamation. Christ became obedient for us unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the feasts of unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, Not during the feast, lest there be a tumult of the people. And when he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the jar and poured it over his head. But there were some who said to themselves indignantly, Why was the ointment thus wasted? For this ointment might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they reproached her. 
But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you. And whenever you will, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for bowing. And truly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Jesus is Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, when they were glad, and promised him money, and he sought an opportunity to betray him. And on the first, first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And, she, and he sent two of his dis disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the householder, the teacher says, where is my guest room, where I am to eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. There prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve, and they were at table eating. Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him one after another, Is it time? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread in the same dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a chalice, and when he had given thirst, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it, and he said to them, 
This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehem vehemently, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place which was called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be greatly distressed untroubled, and he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him, and he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Remove this chalice from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. And they did, not, they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas came 
one of the twelve. And with, uh, with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I shall kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away safely. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Master. And he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of them who stood by drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his heel. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all deserted him and fled. And a young man following him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body. And they seized him, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. And they led Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests and the elders. And the scribes was where the elders and the scribe were assembled. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priest and the whole council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none, for many bore false witness against him, and their witness did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet not even so did their testimony agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus. <coughs> Yet not even did their testimony agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked, Have you no answer to make? What is this that these men testify against you? But he was silent, made no answer. And the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as, a, as deserving death. 
and some began to spit on him and to cover to cover his face and to strike him saying to him prophesy and the god received him with blows and as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of maids of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the maid saw him, and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little, a little while, again the bystanders say to Peter, Suddenly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the cock crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the, with the elders and scribes and the whole council held a a consultation, and they bound Jesus and led him away, and deliver him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priest accused him of many, many things. And Pilate asked him, uh, and Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate wondered. Now as the feast he used to release for them, one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison, who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas, and the crowds came up and began to ask Pilate to, to do as he always did for them. And he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priest had delivered him up. But the chief priest stirred up the crowds he to have him release for them Baraba, Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, then what shall I do with the man who you will call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted at the more, Crucify him. So Pilate 
wishing to satisfy the crowd, release for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace that is Praetorium. And they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and plating a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began to salute him. Hail, <coughs> King of the Jews! And they struck his head, his head with a reed and spat upon him. And they knelt down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put him, his own clothes on him. They, and they led him out to be crucified. And they compelled a passers-by, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in front of the country, the father of Alexander and Rusuf, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mingled with mom, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garment among them, casting lots for them to decide what it should take. And it was the third arm, and they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews, and with him they crucified two robbers, one, of, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, shaking their head and saying, Aha, you will destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests mock him to, uh, to one another with a scribe saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, and said, Eloi, Eloi, lama, sa, lama sabatani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it say, said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And one ran and filling a sponge full of vinegar, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, 
Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. Let us kneel. And the cup, curtain of the temple was torn into two, from top to bottom. And when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that he had thus breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome, who, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered to him, and also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respect member of the council, who was, also, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate wondered if he were, he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. And he bought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. The Passion of Our Lord. God is good all and all the time. God is good. good afternoon. Good afternoon. I saw everybody sit and I remained standing. <laughs> and uh, I decided to come here. 
your grace. You're welcome to St. Paul's, and it's a great honor to come and celebrate with us uh, the beginning of the great events of our salvation as we enter uh, to the Holy Week, beginning today uh, with the celebration of the Palm Passion Sunday. This opens a very solemn, one long liturgy from today to the night we are going to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why it is called the Holy Week. So tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday becomes the institution of the priesthood and the institution of the Eucharist. And Friday, the day that we walk the way of the cross with our Lord, commemorating the events that we have just read, the Passion of the Lord. And indeed, uh, that day, the veneration of the cross. We are therefore at the onset of a very solemn week in the church. Today, I would want us to re reflect on uh, three aspects of Jesus who we are going to be celebrating uh, this whole week and who we celebrate in our Christian lives. Today, we celebrate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and the three ways with which we want to reflect his entry are this, that number one, he entered Jerusalem as the Messiah, the one that they had waited for centuries, the one who had been promised is here, and now comes and enters his city, Jerusalem. We reflect on Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, secondly, as a king. We have heard severally in the Passion uh, well articulated in a chant where he is asked whether he is a king and truly he is the king and thirdly we are going to reflect on Jesus entering Jerusalem his city as the Lamb of God so three uh, ways of looking at Jesus uh, in his entry to Jerusalem one, Messiah, second, King, and thirdly, uh, the Lamb of God. So Jesus entering as the Messiah. As I have said, for a very long time, Jews and the people of God had waited for a Messiah. In fact, they merged people uh, who would have been powerful, they merged prophets in the history of the Jews that uh, they thought would be the Messiah. But for them, it was a long advent. They waited for a long time. But when Jesus came, he was uh, not properly packaged in the way they expected. He was not properly, I mean, packaged in the, in the way they would have wanted a Messiah. And therefore, when he openly and often told them uh, that uh, the kingdom of God is here among us, among them, uh, when he performed signs, as we said last Sunday, the miracles, uh, to indicate uh, to them, to the Jews, that he was the Messiah, they refused to believe. They were indignant of heart. They wanted a differently packaged Messiah. In fact, the Jews, in many instances, asked him, tell us plainly whether you are the Christ. At one moment, if you remember, the disciples of John, John sent his own disciples, even John himself, sent his own disciples to go and ask Jesus whether he is the one. And Jesus answered them and told them, go back and tell him what you have seen 
and what you have heard. Jesus, who is entering Jerusalem, has taught many, has done great works among them. They only needed to see and to hear. What we have heard again in the second reading, uh, that, uh, uh, that many tongues will, uh, will, will proclaim and uh, many hear the word uh, that uh, is sent for their salvation. So they, they, they ask, are you truly the one? On Palm Sunday, today, through the symbols that uh, we see, uh, we witness Jesus who portrays and manifests himself to the crowds that he is the Messiah. Now the symbols are uh, like this, and I said he was he, he came in humility rather than what probably they expected. Uh, one of the symbols is that of a colt. A colt I learned is a young one of a donkey. A symbol of humility and simplicity, uh, rather than possibly uh, horses and chariots. Uh, he chose to ride on a donkey. A donkey that we have had had not been sat on by anyone. According uh, to very ancient traditions, an animal that was devoted uh, for sacred purpose uh, must not be used for ordinary purpose. And therefore, carrying of Jesus was uh, a sacred purpose. And therefore, it was, uh, it was not to be, have been used for ordinary purpose. In fact, this is, uh, this is clearly indicated in, in Scripture. In the book of Numbers, chapter 19, verse 2, uh, this is the statute of the Lord's law, which he has commanded. Tell the people of Israel to bring you a red heifer without defect, in which there is no blemish, and upon which no yoke has ever come to make a sacrifice to appease God. So a symbol of purity, a symbol of sacredness, the cult. By the way, you know, uh, now today the bishop is here. I don't want to make any joke around here. <laughs> But you know, there is a car that is called a colt, isn't it? I think Mitsubishi, yeah, it's called Mitsubishi Colt. Yeah, that is what priests should be driving, no? <laughs> colt is a uh, imitation of Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, that aside. But again, meant for sacredness, Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 3. And the elders of the city, uh, which is nearest to the a slain man uh, shall take a heifer which has never been worked and which has not pulled in a yoke. Now this, this is surrounding a situation where if a man had been killed by an unknown people uh, to cleanse uh, the place and the people, uh, then such a heifer would be offered to God uh, for that. So one that has not worked I mean, plowed or such things, uh, and, and, and one that, uh, that has not uh, been blemished. Of course, even in our traditions, African traditions, we have such. So at a certain time again, the Philistines had taken up Jerusalem. And we hear this uh, again uh, in the first book of Samuel, chapter 6. Now then, take and prepare a new cart and two milch cows upon which there has never come a yoke. <laughs> I always tell you where there is peace, children come around. You know they're coming around me here. There's this is peaceful. And, the, and that the calves should be taken away from them. And therefore, this was a time when Philistine had taken up Jerusalem. So there has to be offered uh, unblemished uh, animals for sacred purposes. So Jesus taking 
or asking for a colt, a young one of a donkey, did not just ask for something to travel on. Yeah. He did not just look for an Uber, or, or, or the Ubers of those days used to be those, but uh, he did not just ask it to move uh, on it, but as a symbol of his simplicity and humility as the Messiah, the one who is to come. Thus, Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey, and he symbolically indicated to the people who were there that he is the Messiah. The one who have, we have sung for is the Messiah. And uh, there are priests, actually, uh, who have tried to, to sit on a donkey on a day like today. But unfortunately, they look for a donkey that was used yesterday to carry uh, fodder for cows. And yeah. I worked in a parish some years back, you know, in Limuru, Ngarariga. And I was told stories of a priest, a Mzungu priest. He used, I knew him personally. Uh, he used to be called Kahari Gogan, uh, uh, a Holy Ghost priest. And this priest, one day during Palm Sunday, uh, he prepared the mass servers and the liturgical team, and they looked for a donkey. And uh, on Saturday, they went at the shopping center in the evening, and he rehearsed sat on the donkey, <laughs> and then they tried to move, and the donkey was very obedient. So next morning, <laughs> he is here dressed in a red chasuble. Uh, he was not in a red chasuble the previous day. And then the donkey is here, and then he sits on it, and it jumps and throws him down. And uh, uh, so some people think, because donkeys look alike, some people think that it is not the same donkey that rehearsed that was brought. <laughs> <laughs> but however, the point is, uh, Jesus came in humility as the Messiah. In ways that people did not expect, he came as a humble servant. Just the way he was born, in a humble family, uh, that is how he manifests uh, his messian or messianic role. Secondly, Jesus enters Jerusalem as a king. When he came riding on a donkey, the disciples and the crowds placed their garments on the road. This, uh, in old days, used to be the way national leaders would be celebrated. The branches, and, the, and, and they sang uh, to him. And the, 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 the Lord went uh, on the way uh, that was prepared by them. Again, about donkeys. You know, donkeys are not very sharp animals. It is said that that same donkey, that carrying that people are going to lay down there for it. Uh, uh, but it was not about the donkey this time. It is the king who is carried on the donkey. And people laid branches and uh, clothes not for the donkey, but for the king. The king uh, who is coming uh, to rule uh, their lives. But more importantly, uh, different from the national kings, uh, the crowds uh, realized that this man, this one among them, is a, a special one. And they sang to him, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. In the book of Maccabees, uh, it is related that around 142 years before Christ, uh, when Jerusalem had also been conquered by the Greeks, uh, Jesus, uh, I mean, the, the, the Maccabees, Judas, came and uh, liberated uh, the, the place as a national king and was hailed. But Jesus is not a national political liberator, not one who comes on horses and riders, uh, but on his donkey, he is a king. He rides a king who rides on a peaceful animal the king of peace, our spiritual king. And finally, the third way with which Jesus enters Jerusalem, he enters Jerusalem as the Lamb of God. 
He is the lamb who would be slain on Calvary, who will be slain, and we are going to, uh, we have heard in the Passion. He is the lamb who at one point was pointed by John the Baptist, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the lamb, the just one uh, who represents we, the unfaithful, the sinless uh, who liberates sinners, the lamb that is unblemished who is offered, the Passover lamb who by death and blood atones the sins, our sins, and makes us all guiltless before God. Upon entry to Jerusalem, he reveals his identity today, that we have a Messiah, we have a King, the Lamb of God is among us. And during Mass, we shall hear, Behold the Lamb of God in the Eucharist. And this evokes in our hearts the song, Hosanna, 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 which means, save us, save us, save me, save us. We are called today, as we reflect on our Messiah in our midst, to, evoke, to be evoked in us the song Hosanna, not just for singing, but seeking to be saved. What do I need to be saved from? We've been in the Lenten season, which is coming to an end. We've been asked to pray, to give alms, and uh, to, to be charitable, uh, and to perform penance. What do I need to be saved from? What is my Hosanna prayer for? Who do I need? Why do I need a Messiah? Why do I need a king? How will I approach the Lamb of God, the Eucharist? For what do I sing Hosanna? In our country, we need a Hosanna song to liberate us from corruption. In our country, we need a Hosanna song uh, to be chanted by all of us, not just by voice, but by action, uh, to live faithful lives. Our Hosanna, our personal Hosanna, could be a Hosanna to save me from sloth, from indifference, uh, from uh, all those things that ail us. As we open ourselves uh, to celebrating the Holy Week, let our Hosanna, each one of us, be to the true Messiah who liberates, be to the true King uh, who serves and not served, to the Lamb of God who is amidst us, and the Lord be with you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, the Father of the Holy God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, 
through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from the heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in the name of the Holy Spirit, and became man. For our sake was we are saved by the precious Spirit. He suffered death upon the Spirit. He was a day upon the day. And according to this scripture, he ascended into the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the King of Life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Lord and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has transmitted the truth of the prophets. I believe in one, the Holy Catholic and the Holy Church. I confess the truth of the Lord of the I look forward to the teaching of the Lord. As we begin Holy Week, let us humbly pray to the Father in the way Jesus our Savior did. He offered prayers and supplications with loud cry and tears as he accepted his passion and death with great faith in order to save us. With humility we say, Lord, save your people. Lord, save your people. Assist your church, we pray. Lord, save your people. Protect our Pope, we pray. Lord, save your people. Protect and bless our Bishop, we pray. Lord, save your people. Clothe our priests and deacons with holiness. We pray, Lord, save your people. Strengthen religious men and women in their vocation. We pray, Lord, save your people. Bless all missionaries. We pray, Lord, save your people. O oh God, who out of the abundance of your grace has chosen to set your servants, Simon Kama, as auxiliary bishops in the Archdiocese of Nairobi, in your goodness, lead them to your Holy Spirit as they prepare to take up their heart. In communion with the Universal Church, we may come to the office of bishop and under your governance in all things, may they direct by word and example the people entrusted to their care. Merciful Father, your Son Jesus Christ has redeemed us by his death and resurrection. Fill us with your spirit that we may be fully cleansed by Christ's blood in this time of his passion and be led to the glory of resurrection who lives and reigns forever and ever.
say, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly to, for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in one joyful voice and celebration we acclaim. And indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make you holy there for this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like that you fall. That they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when he supposed energy to go to the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for forgiveness of sins, and do this in memory of me. And the mystery of faith.
And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, that your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip Agnolo, our Archbishop, our Auxiliary Bishop David Kamau, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us, all we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, uh, her blessed spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Paul, our patron saint, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Under the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on other cities in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in according to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And may the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Pastorem in him nis et cantici, quantum potes tantum aude, quia maior omni laude, nec laudare sufficis. Laudis tema specialis, panis vivus et vitalis. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. In quamen se prima recolitur, huius institutio. In hac mensa novi regis, novum pasca nove legis, face vetus termina, vetus ta.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe. So by his resurrection, you may lead us to wherever you call us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mungu ni mwema na kila wakati We thank St Mary Magdalene Small Christian Community for their good service today. Next Sunday's mass will be animated by the catechumens First Holy Communion class of 2024. You are all invited to this year's annual Palm Sunday reflection in song and music by the choir. And that will take place today at 3 p.m. to around 4.30 p.m. The theme is Miserere Nobis, Have Mercy on Us, and the venue will be here in the chapel at a free entry. The Holy Week program 2024. Holy Thursday, we shall have the Mass of the Lord's Supper at 6 p.m. We shall have washing of the feet and those who have been selected from small Christian communities are requested to meet briefly after this Mass inside the church for a small briefing. We shall have adoration immediately after the Holy Communion inside the chapel before the transfer of the Blessed Sacrament to the altar of repose. Then on Good Friday, we shall have the Stations of the Cross from 10 a.m. from the church. The route will be the same as last year. That is Uhuru Highway towards Westlands. Then Ring Road, Aboriginal Drive, back to St. Paul's through Lower State House Road. There will be general security and safety briefing before the procession. A briefing for those selected to take different roles will happen at 9.30 a.m. inside the church on Friday. Then 3 p.m. we shall have Passion of the Lord. And please note that the same day we shall have a pontifical collection for the Holy Land. Then Holy Saturday, the Easter Vigil Mass will begin at 7 p.m. with a service of the light. We are requested to come with candles and candle holders for the service of the light on Saturday. Saturday, Mass will be animated by the Catholic Women Association and the Men of St. Paul's combined, the Easter Vigil Mass. Then Easter Sunday, all Masses will be as per the usual Sunday timings. We shall have administration of First Holy Communion during this Mass. Please note there will be no PMC and spy mass at their venues. They will join this mass on Sunday, Easter Sunday. Then on Easter Monday, being a public holiday, we shall have only one mass at 9 a.m. The last announcement relates to the Easter charity. On Ash Wednesday, we started our preparation to celebrate the Paschal Mysteries this year and we were asked to pray fast and give alms. As a parish, we built our Lenten program around the connection between prayer and fasting and how the two result in alms giving, specifically and generally in spiritual and corporal works of mercy. On Sunday, 31st March, that is next Sunday, as we celebrate the joy of the risen Lord, we are opening a window to all parishioners to contribute funds to a parish Lenten charity towards the sick at the Kenyatta National Hospital. Across all masses, we shall collect funds that will pay an outstanding medical bills for pre-identified patients. The KNH Catholic Chaplaincy will be our partner 
in this process. For inclusivity, we will ensure patients across genders and ages are identified and benefit from the same. Our initial estimate is to raise around 500,000 Kenyan shillings, and we have no doubt we will do that as St. Paul's. The resurrection of Christ was an incredible example of grief turned to overwhelming joy. And so as a parish, we deliberately timed our Easter charity to coincide with this. The funds we will raise next Sunday, and they will uplift, bring about justice, and cause joy to the patients at the Kenyatta National Hospital. We therefore appeal for your generous support in that. That marks it for the end of our announcements. Before I wish all of you a blessed Holy Week, please join me to thank His Grace, the Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Nairobi, for joining and spending time with us today, and of course, celebrating this Mass with us. Let's kindly give him a big hand. Thank you very much. On behalf of this community and parishioners, we welcome you back to St. Paul's and again and again. Thank you. Let's have a blessed Holy Week. God is good. All and all the time. Thank you. Just one reminder that uh, my son Kilonso has forgotten. We purposed to offer each one of you a chance to confess. And in the Saturdays we have had our recollections, we listened to the confessions of those who desired, and we offered ourselves generously. On this Sunday, in our site, we have three priests we asked to come specifically to assist us in the Sacrament of Reconciliation, they reported here at 7 a.m. this morning, and we have assisted all those who have felt the desire not to go back to their homes with the baggage of their sins. Don't be in a hurry to disappear from this compound after we hear a word from His grace and receive His blessings. The three of the visiting priests Together with us, we avail ourselves to have led you that important service. So that come Easter Sunday, as requested and by, directed by Father Kaigwa, each one of us can have a personal Hosanna that resonates with God's desire for you as you journey in time through history headed to our eternal destiny. I've enjoyed the benefit of having a variety of priests here. I was with the priest of Society of Jesus in the 9 a.m. Mass, Father J.B. I tell you, since I became a priest and since I was born, today I had the best reflection and sermon on Jesus as the best example for us of faithfulness to his mission and through identification with his mission, with his vocation. That was perfect. He had focused the message for the young in our community, specifically the students' community. Our Father Kaigwa has not let down. And as you all listened, his sharing had a fairly heavy deliberate load on catechesis because in line with the theme we have been offered by our grace this year of new evangelization for active participation in Christian life, we must continuously remind ourselves of what we learned, we desire to continue to learn, so that we can uh, dive more and more deeply into the mystery that our faith is. Your grace, just on the strength of uh, mentioning to some Christians who came for the 9 a.m. Mass that you'd be with us here for this Mass, I have seen some who decided to remain. <laughs> Just an indication of how much they desire to hear from their shepherd. And they are truly grateful and thankful that you found the time to be here with us 
And as you heard, we are praying that after the ordination of two auxiliary bishops, that you are bishops, we will have more and more time to interact with us. Your chance now, your grace. So, so thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity that gave me chance to meet with the people of God who are yourselves. Uh, the time we have been here is a bit long, I'm sure for many of you, and I don't want to keep you longer. You know, if you stay longer, you will be hungry, or you will be or you're already hungry. But when the people of God are hungry, they can also be angry. <laughs> so I wouldn't like to use this chance to make you angry. I want to say thank you for the wonderful occasion. I want to appreciate very much the choir that sings with their hearts out. <laughs> I've heard you are going to present the Miserere for sure you are up to it. Uh, I want to thank also the participation that I have had in this celebration to get my day of coming for pastoral reasons is still ahead of me. <laughs> so I thank fathers and for the how they have enabled me to celebrate and to listen to the word of God. Normally I'm the one talking it, but today I had a good chance to listen to the word of God. I've also learned a lot. I wanted to, to ask, Father, he's, he's very good in a, a, the found, fundamental theology of a donkey. <laughs> and I'm seriously so saying, because I used to hear a donkey, they say it has two sounds. When it's crying, it cries at night at two or three in the morning. The time cries, cries. But I want to hear Father to convince me more and more. <laughs> Because uh, traditionally they were saying donkeys were buried with a lot of money, so people would come and, and dig and find out the money. And uh, these days they, they are eaten. Mm -hmm. And second, I want to appreciate your presence here and to encourage you in this week that we call Holy Week, the holiest week in our lives that comes once in every year. I want to encourage you to participate together and to pray together for this great host, for us also to participate in matters, uh, our human growth, our human integrity, our families, and anything that makes a human person live an integral and upright, upright life. It's a chance to, for us to enter back into our, into our hearts, into our hearts. And that journey is long and very tedious. It's because it comes from your head to your heart. It comes from your head to you, your heart. And they say the longest journey on earth is from the head to the, to the heart. So it has to convert us. It has to change us. It has to give us meaning in life. And I want to say that is perhaps why the reason, that's the reason also that the Holy Father, uh, Pope John Paul II, who is now the saint, encouraged all of us and many popes, all of them encourage all of us in this time to be together, to pray together and to sacrifice a lot of time, to sacrifice a lot of time because John Paul II said time as it is, factor of time is not ours, it is a gift from God. Because if you live today, you should thank God that he, is, he, should enable you, he has enabled you to live today, but let him enable also to see tomorrow tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, John Paul was very particular on that. At every time of Easter when he went for retreat, he always insisted on that, even for himself, because you never know whether you'll be there tomorrow. It's a time that, which is a moment that makes us realize that it is, time is a gift from God. 
and the best we can do to God, the people gave to Jesus. Like that time, that woman you heard from the reading called Mary Magdalene, she spent time with him and not saying anything, but even as she anointed with him oil, giving him eternity, the meaning of eternity, this is the only time he repeated the words he said to himself. When he was finishing at the supper, he said, do this in the memory of me. And he told the people, I tell you, I tell you very sincerely, what this lady has done, she will, she will be, she, it will be in the memory of people in the world because she spent that time with Jesus. So with this, with this uh, appeal, which I would pick from Father in the call of Hosanna, I uh, want to encourage, encourage each one of us in our leadership. Each one of us is a leader at a given level. And that leadership is a service. It's a service. I want to encourage even our political leaders, our civil leaders, our spiritual leaders, and everybody to consider giving time to one another. Giving time to one another. And giving that time to one another is like giving uh, that precious gift that awareness of one's presence that he lives, that's what he needs. We want even people who work in our ministries, because I put a lot of emphasis on matters education, I put emphasis on matters health care, I put emphasis on security at this time, on security at this time. Those three things I know Sometimes and many times they are wobbling, even in our in our systems of governorship and everything. But let us appeal to God and appeal to ourselves wherever we are. That in those perspectives where we are, those are the basic basic key priorities of things that we are supposed to face and we are supposed to sing Osana to bring us to the reality. And. It's not just as we await up there, but at the level that we are as well. At the level that we are as well. That is now the provision of leadership. And for that, I want to encourage you again to leave good memories of this season. Very short indeed, but very, very memorable, rich in memories, and very dramatic, very dramatic in the life of humanity. It is a moment a period that will help us to enter back into ourselves and also that we may give God time. We may give him all what he has given us as the gifts of our lives for the service of others. We can do that as well. It means let us come out of this spirit, out of this legend season, reformed or informed, as Father said, catechesis, trans reformed and even transformed. So informed, formed, transformed, and even informed more and more. So I want to assure you of that as I continue wishing you a very holy, holy week in your lives. May God bless you and may it reward you most abundantly. We shall meet at the day of uh, the ordination of Episcopal ordination in our own St. Rodinary. I think it's still in our own design, or even if it's not now our old St. Rodinary. So it is ourselves. It's ourselves now giving also back to God his time, his gifts, whatever we have. So it's not just giving him material, but even that very, very, very moment that you sacrifice for him at worship, at adoration, at confession, at doing something, worshiping, it is also giving him time. So I hope we meet there, and may God bless you, your families. May God bless you individually. May God bless everything that you want God to lead you and to guide you in. Thank you for the wonderful patience. Thank you for the participation. And thank you because I've come and I've confirmed that it is true. I've heard a lot of good stories about this church, St. Paul. But now I notice from the spirit of worship, as you did together, it is true. And keep it. Mugema Kisifiwa. Asa Mugema Kisifiwa Nini? Pumbuli Tua Maji. Okay, so don't do that. Rise up and up. Sawa, sawa.
and rise up and up to praise the Lord. Asante sana. God bless. So we continue rising up. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray upon this holy family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be del delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross. Help them to live your life, to be fulfilled in your presence, and to build their health in, in body and in mind in your presence through Christ our Lord. And may he bless you, Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life.